Okay, for the research of like this, the first one is to investigate if gender influences in virtual texting pattern among undergraduate students in UNISA. Second, to observe the usage of vulgar words used by both genders. And the last one is to examine the tendency of the usage of emoji to express emotions between genders. So, for the research question that we have used to conduct this research paper, the first one is which gender use more emoji in virtual texting to insert emotion element in communication? Second, which gender use more abbreviation in virtual texting? Third, which gender use more vulgar words in virtual texting? And the last one is, are the choices of sentence form is gender based? Okay, hi again. So now it's for the literature review. Okay, why the camera is not focusing on me? Okay, okay, it's focusing. All right, for the literature review, uh, in conducting this research, um, we have used a various numbers of journals to conduct this research. The first one is from Crispin Curlo and Michelle Poff, which stated that there are three types of texting maxism which are brevity and split, paralinguistic restitution and phonological approximation. The second one is from Muhammad Shaban Rafi which is there is a difference between male and female lexical and morphosyntactical SMS language choices. There is no significant gender variation in the use of abbreviations which this result which obtained in by collecting a sample of 300 SMS texts from a group of participants whose age range from 20 to 25 years old. The next journal is from Whitmer and Katzman which stated that they believe that women express their feelings more than men do. Together with the association of emoticon with a fact has also led researchers to observe the relationship between emoticon use and gender. And the last one is from the Pennebecker and Mel. Men have been found that they tend to spend more, use longer words, more articles, and use more references to location compared with women. Assalamualaikum and a very good day I bid to all viewers. Uh, my name is Siti Nuruh Davinti Mazlan and I'm going to present to you the methodology of our research group. And the research methodology is a plan or we can say the guideline for our research study. Our methodology components are research design, pilot study, the settings and participant instrumentation, and the procedure for data and analysis of the data that are obtained. All right, first, our research design. We choose quantitative approach to collecting the data, and uh, a set of questionnaire are made by uh, by us to be given to the participant for the data collecting. And second, the pilot study. We did the pilot study to validate the objective and, and research question by using quantitative approach. Our pilot study on the usage of Malay Trungganunun dialect on uh, the conversation of Omar Tranung um, Twitter account was unsuccessful and was replaced by the current topic. And third, the setting and participant. The setting we have choose is Uniza Gombada uh, Kuala Trunganu, um, band for student from 2016 session are the participant and consists of 10 male and 10 female and the age range from 19 to 23 years old. And for the procedure for the data collection and analysis data, we collect the data by uh, passing the printed questionnaire to the participant 
after they done uh, answering the the questionnaire, we collect them back. So for the next step for the procedure, and next we labeling the data that we uh, isolate the data by gender. We extract them by the topic, which are emoji abbreviation, vulgar words, and the choice of a sentence that they choose. And th those extracted um, data are inserted in Microsoft Excel to aid us in the next step, which is analysis step. And last, the analysis step, uh, the, the data analyzed according to the objective and the research question that have been made. Um, we make comparison and discussion or the data that has been obtained between the two gender, which is male and female. And for the conclusion, Research methodology is a vital step because it ensures the flow research runs smoothly and can be conducted uh, successfully. And the next topic, we pass to the uh, next presenter. Okay, in our result, we found out that emoticons are being used significantly by female. If you can see in the graph, it can be seen that the usage of emojis such as law, blowing kiss, and crying were significantly used by females. This is supported by the study conducted by Balakrishnan in part of 2010. They stated that female youths are more active in using emoticons when they are text because it puts some sort of emotions in their text. Besides that, Whitman Kaplan 1997 and Wolf 2000 also states that women use emoticons often than men did. Uh, yeah, as we can see here, we can see that it is now proven that female uses more emoticons than male in virtual text. Okay, moving on with abbreviations. Okay, abbreviations is actually a necessity when it comes to virtual texting. This is due to the character limit and it makes it simpler for texters to send their messages because it makes the messages shorter, simpler but wholly understandable by the receivers of the text. So, if you can see in the graph, actually there's not much difference between men and women or female or male who use abbreviation in their text. This is due because, like I said earlier, we use abbreviations to make this text shorter, simpler, and it is understandable by all people. Because, for example, some if you're still using the conventional text messaging app, it only allow you like, I, it only allow you to put 160 characters in it, and it is very short. And that's why people use abbreviations. So, and yeah, because it makes it shorter, simpler, and it is understandable by everyone. We have said that our research objective is to in, uh, is to study the gender influences in virtual texting patterns among undergraduate students and examining the linguistic variation in virtual texting by men and women. Okay, the result has shown that the usage of vulgar words among males are more compared to females. Okay, males uh, use more rude words compared to females. From the analysis, it shows that part of this belief is true and Nabiha is going to tell about the result of the data. So madam, let's move on to our last part which is the conclusion. So this study is carried out on a small group of undergraduate students in UNISA whose ages range between 19 until 23 years old and this research had covered the differences between gender in language style in virtual texting in SMS and WhatsApp among the university students. So based on these findings, the researchers can see that females are more frequent in the using of emoticon compared to males and most of the kind tend to be straightforward person as males are likely to be less emotional compared to women. On top of that, it had been clearly shown that women tend to be more overly expressive in language even in non-verbal communication. In the context of vulgar words, researchers have found that males are common with vulgar words rather than women. According to Lakoff, a man saying words like lovely will be criticized 
as being a gay person and lacking of manliness, but for a lady, this will be absolutely ordinary. So we can conclude that men use vulgar words to interact more and show the solidarity among them. The study indicates that on the linguistic level, there are gender differences identified in terms of emoticon, abbreviation, vulgar words, and also the certain patterns. And the finding disclosed that SMS words are shortened to manage cost and time. However, in view of in a meeting, the outcome shows that there is some special social impact in messaging SMS in English for both sexual orientation. In any case, writing to simple and brief SMS messages may lead to incomplete comprehension of the message. Furthermore, composing as well long messages may prompt perplexity as planned message from the sender is lost. All in all, we can say that women are more talkative and more emotional uh, compared to men and in their use of virtual texting language. I think that's all. I think for recommendation, um, should be further research on the student that uses nice spoken words. For instance, vulgar words will influence bad manners. Secondly, must take in in that research must take in consideration of others' prejudice in playing the role regarding interpreting emotional reactivity. For example, emotion through virtual texting cannot convey true feelings. And lastly, uh, should do further research on the outward appearance because outward appearance can have an impact towards other judgment and affect the clarification of visual and relevant data because first impression is always the best. That's all from me. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about our research paper which is entitled Gender differences in linguistic style in virtual texting among undergraduate students. So, as you all know, oh, it is getting recorded. Okay. Speaking in terms of how speakers use the resources of language variation in making meaning in social encounters. It has been reported by anglophone literature that there is connection between language and gender yeah, no. <laughs>